Hi, my name is Maureen Fish. And I'm Garrett Dragoo. And this is our rehab project. So our patient Eric Smith is a 31-year-old male rugby player. He plays on a recreational club team. By profession, he's a personal trainer, so he's a pretty active guy. On March 25th, though, at a rugby match, he collided with an opposing player and fell on his outstretched hand, giving him a posterior elbow dislocation. And now he's wanting to be able to rehab it and be able to return to his sport by next season. So before we can continue, we need to know some more about uh, posterior elbow dislocations. So the way a posterior elbow dislocation occurs is an axial force placed on the forearm when the arm is weight-bearing and supinated, separating the radius and ulna posteriorly from the humerus. And so now that we know how it happened, you just got to know the anatomy around it. So we got the three bones. We have ligaments that help support muscles that move the joint. We have three nerves, the radial ulnar and median nerve that run through it, and we have a bunch of blood vessels also. And so some concerns are that we would lose function, we would uh, fracture bones, we would uh, occlude, or uh, we would separate nerves and blood vessels and just really damage the joint. So from a precaution standpoint, once uh, we get that taken care of is we don't want to provide too much varus or valgus force and do not pro provide traction. All right, so our differences between operative and non-operative treatments. For operative, of course, it's necessary to get surgery if your bone is out of place or you tore ligaments. Also, you're going to be in a cast for four to six weeks. Um, you're less likely to re-injure your elbow, and this rehab is more range of motion focused, and the time frame is 12 to 28 weeks. For non-operative, you're only going to be in a sling for one to two weeks. The rehab is more of strength focused and uh, you're more likely to uh, re-injure the elbow again because the recovery is quicker and the time frame is nine to 26 weeks. So after his injury, Eric went into the ER and got some uh, x-rays taken and he ended up fracturing the coronoid and he tore some soft tissue and ligaments during his injury. So he went in for surgery on March 29th and got some screws placed into the coronoid and repaired the ligaments and he was put into a immobilization cast for four to six weeks and so since he had the surgery we are obviously doing a post-operative care. Okay, so first stage one of our rehab plan, it's a passive phase, it's zero to four weeks. So our goals here, we're gonna maintain his cardiovascular fitness. We're also gonna sustain his range of motion in his shoulder and fingers and the strength in his fingers and shoulders as well as his core and hip. So to maintain his cardiovascular fitness, first we're gonna have him use a recumbent bike since he doesn't have movement in his arm so he wouldn't be able to hold on to a stationary bike at first. But then we would progress him to a stationary bike once he was out of the cast. And in a bike, you can add resistance to it as well as the time frame to increase the cardiovascular fitness. And here's a video demonstrating a stationary bike. To maintain cardiovascular fitness with an application of a stationary bike, this excludes the need of a crucial movement so that she can keep that on the stable. Okay, so for, to sustain his range of motion for the shoulder and fingers, we're going to do active range of motion for his shoulder and fingers, like flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, and for they're going to be done for three sets of ten. And to sustain his strength, um, we're going to do ball squeezes uh, for his wrist extensors and finger flexors. Um, we're going to do isometric core contractions as well as supine bridges for his core so he can keep his core strong so he's able to be stable. And here's a video demonstrating how ball squeezes are done. To perform ball squeezes, we're going to have a patient seated in a chair. She's going to be holding on to that flexible ball. And she's going to flex her fingers into the ball and then relax. She's going to do this for one minute, for three sets. So now we're moving on to stage two, which is the active phase, which is starting from 
week five through eight. And at this point, Eric is getting his cast removed. And so our main goal is to get that range of motion back in his elbow. So to increase his elbow range of motion, we're gonna do assistive stretches for all degrees of motion within the elbow, flexion, extension, supination, pronation. And then we're gonna move on to active stretching where he's gonna do it on his own. We're also gonna work on soft tissue stuff, specifically trigger points that may have, may have uh, occurred while he was immobilized in this cast. And here's a video demonstrating how the stretches would be done. For acting assistant, the patient provides some uh, help with information for providing the rest and take it to the end range of motion. For active stretching, the patient will do all the work on her own. Okay, so for stage three, which is the resistant phase, it's nine to 12 weeks. Our goals here are to achieve his full range of motion in his elbow and increase his strength and proprioception in his uh, upper extremities. So to achieve full range of motion in his elbow, we're gonna do joint mobilizations, grade three and four. We're gonna do the medial lateral and anterior glides. And then we're also gonna do PNF stretching, hold relax so he can uh, sustain an isometric contraction. And here's a video describing how to do a medial glide joint mode. We'll take your arm and place it between his arm and the rib cage. He's going to support the proximal humerus and he'll provide a medial glide onto the radius. So. Okay, and then to increase the strength and proprioception in his upper extremities, for our strength, we're going to do we're going to focus on the bicep and triceps to really increase the strength in his elbow. And for proprioception, we're going to do body blades with ball rolls on a wall, as well as D1 and D2 patterns, which are going to be passive. And we're also going to have the patient follow their hand as the clinician is doing it. And here is a video demonstration on how to do a bicep curl. To perform a bicep curl, the patient's going to be holding it onto the wall. So you've got to make sure that their chest is up front, eyes up, chin slightly tucked. She's going to make sure her scapula is back and together, arms close together, and she's going to actively flex her elbow. And then go back to the starting position. So now we're moving on to stage four, which is the aggressive phase. Uh, week 13 through 28, now we're just trying to get him back and ready to play rugby. And our goal is just to get him to sport. So uh, we're going to get him back to sport by play, doing functional activities. Uh, this includes doing single arm push-offs on a wall that will simulate him stiff arming a player in the rugby game. Uh, he'll do underhand tosses, running from a three-point stance, and we're going to continue that D1, D2 flexion, but add some good resistance on it to make it difficult. And then once we mastered this, we're going to move on to activity-specific exercises where he's actually going to be performing a stiff arm, tossing a rugby ball, running with the ball in hand, and tackling a dummy. So here's a video showing our functional activity exercises. Moving on, we move to activity specific. To perform one of our activity specific exercises, we're going to have the rugby player toss the uh, rugby ball laterally like you would in the game situation. To do this, we're just going to have him step and toss laterally with the clinician. So, just to recap the difference timelines between the two uh, different routes doing the surgery versus non surgery. Uh, the surgery is going to take longer to do the non uh, the passive phase because you're going to be immobilized by a cast longer compared to just being in a sling. So you're going to it's going to take longer to work on range of motion versus getting to start on strength sooner. So once you get past uh, that standpoint, the exercises are pretty much the same. It's just the operative takes longer because of the immobilization at the beginning. And these are our references. Eric was able to make a full recovery from physical therapy and return to his rugby team before the next season started. Thank you for watching.